Front Picks, Heather Williams alongside Casey Getz and Steve Wilmoth of ESPN Tri-Cities, tricitysports.com. We didn't get many games in the last time that we picked because of the hurricane, and our continued thoughts and prayers are with the communities affected by the storm. Hopefully our friendly sports debate this week can bring a little smile to the face of those of you watching. <laughs> Only two games now separating first place from last place, so let's get this started this week. Steve, I'll start with you. In the Commonwealth, there are three massive games on the schedule. First up, unbeaten East Side at Ryko, who is also unbeaten. It is a pleasure to be back here talking about football. I mean, we're lucky to be here doing that. I'm, with all the happenings of the last few weeks, I'm sure nobody's going to get upset at our picks this week. The Eagles have really been scoring the points with quarterback Landon Lane at the controls. In five of the seven wins, Rykov has scored at least 52 points. About the Spartan defense that's tossed three straight clean sheets. This one probably is going to determine the Cumberland District winner. Rykov has shown it can win both offensively and defensively. It won an offensive game at Honeaker, and I'll take the Eagles. I think Rykov, they just have a little more experience. I feel like they're a year ahead of Eastside, where Rykov had a good season in 2022. They took another step last year. They're ready to take that next step this year and I think be the best team in the region. So I will take the Eagles to get the win. At the beginning of the season, a lot of people gave me grief because I had Eastside ranked in my preseason top five Tuesday polls on Tuesday. I think they've proven their worth, but I think this is where the undefeated streak comes to an end. They're good, but they're not quite Ryko good. I will go with the Eagles as well. Another big Region 1D matchup for two teams fighting for playoff position. Patrick Henry at Holston. Casey, we'll start with you this time. I like the Rebels. I think their ground game, what they did against Grundy a couple weeks ago, scoring 54 points and then watching Grundy turn around and really hand it to Holston. Acre. That impressed me. I think Patrick Henry goes on the road, short trip over to Holston, but I think Patrick Henry gets the win. Patrick Henry also hobbled a little bit with their outstanding line prospect, Tyler Barrett, on gimpy ankles. And when you got a two-way starter like Barrett and he's not at full strength, how can you produce enough running lanes for Mikey Jenkins and company? I really like what Noah Tweed, the quarterback, does for Holston, a little dual threat guy. I'm going to take Holston at home in this one. This is a tough one for me because I think I think there's a lot of expectations for a Patrick Henry in the year, but you just mentioned the injuries are starting to pile up, pile up on them. Holston just a little bit more healthy. I will go with the Cavs as well. Our Friday Night Rivals game of the week, Union at Ridgeview. I will have the call. Yeah, you're getting the backup quarterback this week. I'll have the call of this game. Steve, we'll start with you. Ridgeview comes in having scored 288 points combined against opponents however that are seven and 22 hey but don't overlook that Ridgeview defense as well only allowed 21 points all season I'm gonna have to go with Union. I just think Union's schedule has prepared them better for this game I'll take the Bears on the road I'm gonna take the Bears on the road I think the fact that they have played Science Hill they've played Graham I think that has got them ready for a game like this to go on the road I'm gonna take Union to get the win on Friday Night Rivals over Ridgeview yeah on paper this is clearly the closest matchup game of the week even though the records don't really show union those you mentioned steve played a much tougher schedule i think that's why they play this schedule is to prepare them for this game i think it is really close but i'm also going to pick the bears Let's head across the state line now to tennessee and a huge game for west ridge almost a must win game against jeff county steve we'll start with you oh it's not almost it is a must win if west ridge does not win this game it does not make the playoffs. Westridge only averaging about 14 points per game in its last four outings. They've got to find a way to run the football. Only six yards rushing in their last outing against Science Hill. Only 134 total yards, 87 of which came on one play. I think uh, Jefferson County will roll in here and clinch this playoff spot for the Patriots. West Ridge, meanwhile, has had a tough season in conference play. They did a little better in their non-conference, but the, the level of competition wasn't as great. Because of that, I'm going to take Jeff County in this one to win at West Ridge. I don't know what's wrong with West Ridge. I don't know what's going on, why they can't seem to score points, and you have to be able to score points. So I'm sorry. I hope I'm wrong, West Ridge. I hope you prove me wrong, but I'm going to go with Jeff Coe as well. Big battle for playoff seeding in Tennessee High at Crockett. Casey, you're up first. Tennessee High, they look good against Abingdon. Uh, last week winning 21 to nothing, but I think Crockett's offense may be a little too balanced, and I like the Pioneers at home over Tennessee High. Tennessee High defense back-to-back 21 -back nothing shutouts in its last two outings. Crockett, that really close game at South Green. The offense is coming around. 
I think Crockett's going to be excited to be at home, and I think that Tennessee High defense is just playing too well right now. I like the Vikings to win on the road in this one. Yeah, I got the chance to see Tennessee High against Gate City last week. That defense shut Gate City out completely. Yeah. They just looked really impressive. I think that when you look at Crockett, I think that they're playing well, but I just don't think it goes back to the scheduling thing. I don't think they have the impressive wins on their schedule that Tennessee High does, so I'll give the, the nod to the Vikings. A huge game in the top two teams in our area in Class 2A, South Green at Happy Valley. Steve, who do you like in this one? Can the Happy Valley Warriors go on the road, win at Rebel Hill? I don't think so this time. I think South Green, I think that atmosphere Friday night is going to be electric on Rebel Hill. They're happy to have football back. If this was on a different hill, Warrior style, I might go with Happy Valley, but it's not. I'm going with South Green. This year, Happy Valley is making a claim that, hey, we may be the best team in Region 1 2A, but I think they need to beat South Green in order for me to believe that Happy Valley is the best. I like South Green to get the win over Happy Valley. Just because they're at home, I'm going to go with South Green. All right, we got a couple of bonus picks for you on our YouTube channel. A southerly surging. Virginia High team play really well, even in a couple of losses at Tazewell. Casey, we'll start with you. Virginia High coming off of bye week, going to Tazewell. It's going to be a big game in the Southwest District. I like the Bearcats. The Bearcats, they hung tough with Graham. If you can do that, I think you can hang with anybody in Southwest Virginia. So I like the Virginia High coming off of bye week. I think they get the win at Tazewell. Well, those Bearcat losses the last three games, and look at the competition. Radford, undefeated Ridgeview, undefeated Graham, so I mean, they've been playing some really tough competition. I think Tazewell, with that quarterback playing as well as he is, Virginia High still trying to get back on the winning side. I think Tazewell handled them pretty well last year. I think I'll stick with the Bulldogs to repeat. I just been really impressed with the way that Virginia High has played, even in their losses. They gave Ridgeview and Graham all that they wanted. I do not think that Tazewell is as good as Ridgeview or Graham. I think Virginia High is bound to win one of these at this point. So I'm going to pick the Bearcats and probably a little bit of an upset, but I like them in this game. Final one, Abingdon at Marion. Uh, Abingdon, they look like world beaters at times. At times, they look a little questionable, um, even in some of their wins. So, Steve, who do you like in this one? Well, the, the win-loss records don't favor Marion. The statistics don't favor Marion. I mean, Abingdon, the defense is only allowing 14 points per game. Marion's offense only scoring 10. Meanwhile, Marion, in the five games, they have allowed 200, yard, 200 points total. Abingdon has scored about that many in its six games. None of the stats add up for Marion, and that's what I got to go on, so I'll go with Abingdon. I think Abingdon, they're a really good team. You know, they did lose to Tennessee High 21 to nothing, but I still think the Falcons are a really good team. Marion has had their struggles this year. I think Abingdon wins big at Marion. Yeah, I agree. As much as Abingdon has been a little questionable by Abingdon standards, they're still the light wears ahead of Marion right now. That team is struggling a little bit, uh, still trying to figure some things out. So I will make it a clean sweep for Abingdon. All right, you can get all your scores and highlights coming up Friday night on Friday Night Huddle on WCYB. Thanks for joining us.